My name is Errol Lord, and I'm an assistant professor of philosophy at the University of Pennsylvania. So one of the main puzzles in moral philosophy is uh, how or whether we can be justified in being partial. So uh, we're often partial towards people and projects and colleagues and relationships and sports teams. Uh, and it can initially seem pretty puzzling how that could be. So when thinking about, say, what our attitude should be on Super Bowl Sunday, we can turn to the philosophical literature uh, for some clues about what might justify partiality. So one theory says that partiality is justified by facts about our personal projects. So it might be that um, my partiality towards the Broncos is justified by the fact that I put the Broncos at the center of one of my projects. It might be that the, the Broncos doing well is kind of an important part of my life going well, or my life having a certain kind of meaning. A second view says that it's my relationship with the Broncos that justifies my partiality. So it might be that the fact that I've been a fan since I was 12 years old that justifies my partiality, or it might be the fact that my dad was a fan that justifies my partiality. And then finally, some people think that no, it's just the individual aspects of the thing that you're partial towards that justifies your partiality. So Peyton Manning's greatness all by itself might justify partiality towards the Broncos, or the speed of the defensive line might justify partiality towards the Broncos. Or perhaps the fact that John Elway played for the Broncos might justify your partiality. Uh, and so those are the, those are the analogs of the uh, popular views in moral philosophy applied to our um, football puzzle of partiality. Now one of the great things about sports is that oftentimes teams or athletes that we don't expect to be successful are very successful and when you're a fan of that team or that athlete uh, it's really really exciting to go through a time where they're unexpectedly successful and bandwagon fans kind of want to jump onto that. They want to get the positive emotions and positive meaning to their lives by being a fan when things are going well. But the problem with that is that if they're really a bandwagon fan, then they won't be committed to the team or the athlete when things are going poorly. Now oftentimes people analogize fandom with our relationships with other people. So they think that the justification of our partiality towards athletes and teams is much like the justification of our partiality towards other people. And while that's illuminating, we shouldn't get carried away. So while it might be okay to miss an acquaintance's birthday party in order to watch the big game, it's probably not okay to miss your spouse's birthday party in order to watch the big game. Similarly, my, while it might be okay to be very loud uh, while cheering on your favorite team, it's not okay to rush onto the field and pull down the goalposts uh, after your team wins or loses. So as we have seen, there are many reasons why uh, someone might be partial and why someone's partiality might be justified. As you might have noticed, I've been using the Broncos as an example a lot, and that's no coincidence. So I'll be rooting for the Broncos on Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm definitely partial towards the Broncos. Further, I think that my partiality is justified, not just because of Peyton Manning's greatness or the speed of the defensive line, but also because I grew up as a Broncos fan, my parents were Broncos fans, and the, Bron the success of the Broncos in the 90s contributed to the meaning of my life during that time. But fear not, Panthers fans. Even though I'll be rooting for the Broncos on Super Bowl Sunday, the philosophical literature can explain why you're equally justified in being partial as I am.